Hi, welcome to Cake Carving 101. I thought I would let this video run kind of slow today so I could walk you through the nuances of cake carving. I'm gonna uh, just introduce you to some basics here and that way you can carve out almost any shape you want in theory. And of course I've got little mice in my kitchen today eating up all the scraps from the cake carving. So first what you should know is I've got uh, 11 cake layers here. They're all confetti cake. I stacked them ahead of time with Swiss meringue buttercream. And then I wrapped the whole thing up and let it uh, finish thawing in the refrigerator overnight. They were initially frozen. I took them out of the freezer, filled and stacked them, and then wrapped it back up with plastic wrap and let it completely thaw in the refrigerator for another 24 hours. So now these cakes are cold, but not frozen. You do want the buttercream to be still firm so that if you touch it, you can't really uh, mess up the buttercream. Um, if you have buttercream that's softer and sliding around, you'll never be able to carve a cake. And you can see how easily it is here that I'm kind of shaving off layers and the buttercream really isn't shifting. I've got support rods throughout the cake. I've got cake boards between the layers. So I've got a total of three cake boards, one on the very bottom, one in the middle, and one toward the top. So i um, supporting like every four layers of cake with a cake board and um, boba straws for support. I've also got the long dowel through the middle of all the layers to keep it from shifting on a horizontal plane. So what I've done to start carving this cake is I've kind of uh, just abstractly carved the silhouette of the Pusheen cat, which I am carving out for my daughter's birthday. And I am at times holding it up against the cake to carve out a general shape uh, following the silhouette of the cat. But also, I've got the stuffed animal model of the cake in front of me, and I'm looking back and forth between the plush model and the silhouette that I've traced to get the general shape of the cat. And the most important thing with cake carving, besides the cake uh, and the frosting being extremely cold when you start to carve, is that you take your time. So I am shaving little bits at a time here. Um, right now, what you can see is I'm carving down or cutting down the cake board just slightly, uh, trimming it down because I've carved off more of the cake than I initially expected when I placed those cake boards. So that's fine, You, it's just cardboard. Take a pair of strong uh, kitchen scissors or utility scissors and you can trim down the cake board, which is just cardboard, because you really don't want it um, peeping out from under your cake layers. You wouldn't be able to carve the shape that you needed. So here you can see I'm again using the silhouette to carve out the general shape of the cat and um, going little bits at a time. Um, this probably took me all together about an hour. Um, maybe a little bit less. Um, I started out with about 11 cake layers here and I did get rid of I think one layer on top because I didn't need it but that's okay because it's better to start off with too much cake rather than too little cake. These cake layers were all eight inches in diameter and um, I had a final height of I believe about uh, nine or ten inches <clears throat> and I'm carving that all down so I chose to make the size of this cake uh, the same size as the plush model I was working with but of course you don't have to do that it is a good idea to have some kind of picture silhouette or model to go off of as you're creating the initial shapes so here I am just going back and forth, stepping back and just kind of looking at the um, cake and trying to make sure I have the right shape as I go slowly shaving off very small pieces. If at some point your buttercream gets warm and too soft and you get any 
slippage of the cake as you're working, just wrap it up in plastic wrap, surface wrap it, and stick it back in the fridge for a little bit to get that buttercream firmed up again. You can do this with either ganache or um, Swiss meringue buttercream or, or even American buttercream as long as you refrigerate and let it get firm before carving. So again, I snipped off a little bit of the cake board and here I am measuring against the plush model that I have always in front of me to kind of get an idea of uh, the size. Now I'm not making this exactly like the plush model because the plush was very thin and it just wasn't realistic to have a cake that thin, uh, nor was it very uh, economical let's say because it wouldn't have fed too many people so I chose to make my Pusheen cat in this instance a little bit wider around the waist and hips than the actual model here I'm carving out the ears and I'm leaving the dowel in the middle because I am going to attach a birthday cake uh, sorry a birthday hat on top which I will do at the very end uh, as you can see, I had to stick it back in the fridge for a little bit to get the buttercream to firm up, and I'm going back to carving. Now, the one thing that did help me carve out the shape a lot was I carved out the very bottom cake board the same shape and size that my Pusheen uh, plush was at, at the bottom. So that helps me kind of find out where I need to land as far as his uh, bottom and uh, you know where the cake should meet the board at the bottom so that was very helpful that middle cake board is pretty wide so I'm gonna have to give that a trim at some point but I'm still just taking my time shaving shaving out little bits and pieces because obviously if you take off too much you can't put it back so it's better just to take your time and take off tiny pieces at a time I do have the whole cake sitting on a turntable and I do have a acrylic work board which is just a bigger cake board underneath my um, cardboard cake board and um, that is helping uh, everything to uh, stay uh, stable and it makes it easy for me to carry it around and in and out of the refrigerator. Uh, also, what might help you with cleanup is to just line your kitchen counter with plastic wrap and that way at the end when you've got all these cake pieces that you've shaved off, whether you want to just use them for cake pops or you want to just have the kids eat them, you can just lift the plastic wrap on moss off your countertop and you're done with the cleaning process. So here I'm trimming down my cake board one more time and then back to carving the cake. So as you can see here, I am getting the general shape of the Pusheen. It's always better once you are comfortable with the shape 
that you carve it out a little deeper than you think it needs to be, meaning that the curves and lines should be a little bit more exaggerated than you intend for the final outcome because you have to remember that you will be coating it with one to two layers of frosting, in my case ganache, and then on top of that will be the fondant. So you're talking about potentially a quarter inch or more of frosting and fondant on top of this cake. So that might uh, cover up your shape or um, de-accentuate your shape to a certain degree. So you do want to carve it a little bit more exaggerated than uh, you might think is necessary. So here I'm just doing the final trimmings of the cardboard cake board. And um, then I will be putting it back in the fridge soon to firm up one final time before putting the layers of ganache. So I'm gonna clean up my work board here to make sure that there are no crumbs on it before I start applying my crumb coat of ganache. So I'm using a dark chocolate ganache, two parts chocolate to one part heavy cream. In this case, I have made this ganache oh, about 12 hours ahead of time to give it time to set and reach a thickened consistency like the consistency of peanut butter. It's really important to get the right consistency of ganache before you get started. Trying to use a ganache that is too loose is very frustrating and will just waste your time. Trying to work with a ganache that is too thick is also very frustrating. We'll start to pull off bits of the cake while you're frosting and that will also be very frustrating. As you can see here that the ganache has already start to set in some places as I'm still finishing up the cake and this is because the cake is cold so with cold cake and ganache you have to work pretty fast that doesn't mean that there's no going back or no fixing errors dark chocolate ganache is actually fairly easy to work with so as you can see I'm using a scraper here and even though the ganache has partially set in some places you can still scrape chocolate and make it smooth but in this case this is only the crumb coat so I'm putting on a pretty sloppy crumb coat very quickly to get it all covered and the crumbs trapped inside and then I will let it set for a few minutes before I put on the final coat here I'm using my fondant smoother or sugar smoother to uh, take off the excess ganache because what we don't want is for the crumb coat to be unnecessarily thick because that will make it more difficult to keep the shape that we are ultimately looking for in the end. As you are refining the crumb coat, if you get crumbs in your ganache, you do not want to put it back into the same bowl with the ganache. So you can see that I have two bowls working here, one with fresh ganache, another one where I am scraping off bits of ganache that might have crumbs of cake in it, which I don't want to be in my fresh ganache. So this is just the crumb coat. I'm not sweating it if it's not perfect, although I'm trying to get it fairly smooth and even. I don't want it chunky because if I have big chunks of ganache, that's something that I will not be able to take off after it's set for a few minutes.
It is my preference to always use dark chocolate ganache underneath any fondant cakes or any cakes that I cover with modeling chocolate. So my cake is now covered with ganache and I'm getting ready to cover it with fondant. I am cutting out another clean silhouette of my pusheen cake and I am going to use it to cut out two pieces of fondant representing the front and back sides of the pusheen cat. Here I am coloring my white fondant with a bit of gray uh, modeling chocolate and then this is my method for uh, combining colors which I have learned from watching some satin ice videos. I prefer combining different colored fondants rather than adding gel color and trying to achieve the color I am looking for. And so I'm going to roll out a back and a front for the cat. And once I'm done here, my fondant pieces will be about 1 16th of an inch thick, somewhere between 1 16th and an eighth of an inch thick. I'm going to cut out my pusheen shape using the silhouette that I cut out of parchment. I am going to thoroughly cover the uh, ganache cake with shortening. I'm putting quite a bit of shortening here which will help my fondant stick to the cake. I already put the front side on so now I'm putting the back side of the cat. So I'm just going to lift the back side of the fondant and quickly adhere it to the ganache um, by smoothing it out with the palms of my hands and I will also use a smoother to get all the air bubbles out and really get it uh, smooth on the cake. I'm going to trim some pieces of the uh, fondant that I don't need and then I will start to seal the two seams together front and back using both my hands and the fondant smoother card. I'm going to work quickly but also very deliberately to try to get all the air bubbles out of my fondant before I seal the seams together. Here's the final cake after all the final decorations have been added.